Search crews hoisted what's left of the sightseeing helicopter out of the Hudson River this afternoon. Seen here just seconds after it collided midair with a small plane yesterday. The recovery efforts um, are focused on the, uh, on the Piper now. Side scanning sonar have um, revealed a number of promising targets. The Liberty Tours Eurocopter A Star 350 had just taken off from Manhattan's west side. The Piper PA 32 left New Jersey's Teterboro Airport bound for the Jersey Shore. On board the plane was pilot Stephen Altman, his brother Daniel, and nephew Douglas. The helicopter was carrying five friends vacationing from Bologna, Italy, who were celebrating one couple's 25th wedding anniversary. And I express the ambassador our uh, feelings, our, our sympathies, and prayers for the five Italian tourists that died, but for all nine people. So how busy does this get? It gets really busy. Justin Green is an aviation attorney as well as a certified commercial pilot who has flown over the Hudson. He says the FAA can prevent this sort of tragedy. They can make the helicopters operate at a lower altitude than the fixed wing aircraft coming through the area. And if you're, if you're at different air altitudes, you're never gonna have an accident like this. Just last month, the Department of Transportation released a report to the FAA about the safety of the on-demand flight industry, which includes small planes and helicopters like the ones used by Liberty Tours. It found in 2007 and 2008, commercial air carriers had zero passenger deaths. In contrast, during that same period, there were 33 fatal on-demand accidents, resulting in 109 deaths. Incidents involving on-demand aircraft have happened in New York before. In 2006, Yankee pitcher Corey Lytle and his flight instructor crashed into a Manhattan high-rise. And in 2005, another Liberty Tours helicopter splashed into the East River. All seven aboard survived. While you saw the bulk of the helicopter wreckage being pulled out earlier today, researchers are still using sonar to try and find the bulk of the aircraft that's still in the water and, of course, those two bodies as well. Russ? Carly, let me ask you about these federal safety recommendations for these so-called on-demand aircraft companies. What can you tell us about those? Well, you know, these recommendations, the ones that were made in July, are only echoing ones that have been around since 2005. The FAA's own subcommittee put out 124 different recommendations, and very few, if any of them, have been implemented yet. Hari Srinivasan here in New York City. Thank you.